Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about how gluten sensitivity can damage your stomach and particularly something the stomach makes that's called intrinsic factor. Okay, so let's start with what the heck is intrinsic factor. Well, that is a substance made by the lining of the stomach and in a nutshell, you use that to be able to absorb vitamin B12 uh, into your uh, bloodstream through your intestines. So, if you don't have enough intrinsic factor, eventually you're going to have a hard time absorbing B12 and eventually your B12 levels can drop so low that you start to develop either overt symptoms in your body or you're going to start to develop changes on your blood work, assuming someone uh, does the right tests. So what's the connection? Well, let's start again with what the heck is gluten sensitivity. Well, gluten sensitivity is kind of a generic term given to the problem when your immune system it thinks that gluten or wheat is an invader and is trying to kill it, okay? So there's different kind of flavors of that, but sometimes I use that sort of as a catch-all. There's technically a difference between gluten sensitivity and celiac disease and non-celiac wheat sensitivity, but for purpose of our discussion today, it's just do you have a problem with wheat or not? So a lot of people don't know they have a problem with wheat. Uh, they expect there to be a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms like cramping or diarrhea or stuff like that. But research has shown, and my own experience with patients has shown over the last 20 years, that non-gastrointestinal symptoms are way more common than gastrointestinal symptoms if you've got a problem with wheat. That includes neurological symptoms like headaches and neuropathy, uh, brain fog, uh, anxiety, uh, uh, all the way to uh, hormonal symptoms like PCOS and reproductive problems and thyroid, uh, which I talk about in another video. And so gluten sensitivity is when your immune system is making antibodies to some part of wheat, okay? Now here's the connection. The connection between antibodies to wheat and your stomach is that there's this thing called cross-reaction that can occur, or molecular mimicry. And what that means is this antibody here that is made to stick on a piece of wheat, it can stick onto intrinsic factor, or the cells that make intrinsic factor, and that is called cross-reactivity. Why does it occur? Because there are protein sequences in the intrinsic factor or the cells that make the intrinsic factor that look a lot like the protein sequences over here. So you can start to develop a new antibody response to the intrinsic factor. And if that happens, now you've actually got an autoimmune problem. And it's called autoimmune because now your immune system is attacking you. In this situation where you're just attacking gluten, that's not autoimmune. In this situation where you're attacking yourself, that's autoimmune. So, how would you even know if you had that? Well, again, over time, what happens is you can start to decrease your levels of B12. So on blood work, what might show up is something called macrocytosis, or even if it gets really bad, a macrocytic anemia. Macrocytosis just means the red blood cells are getting too big. And what you find on blood work is a test called MCV, okay? And that is a cell volume test. That tells you how big the red blood cells are getting. And if they start to just start to expand and get bigger, there's only a couple things that can really do that, broadly speaking. And B12 deficiency or insufficiency is one of them. So lab ranges kind of top out between like 97 or 100. Like that's considered like the, the upper range of normal. For my money, anything above 97 is very questionable. We probably need to investigate it. So that was what can happen on blood work. What would tell you symptom-wise that you had a B12 problem? Well, fatigue is something that is very common because B12 is absolutely necessary to make energy, to make ATP. But B12 is also necessary for methylation processes and myelin formation. So your kind of classic symptoms of B12 insufficiency or deficiency can kind of run the gamut because it depends on what tissue is getting deprived of energy. So overall fatigue, depression, anxiety, neuropathy type symptoms like getting pain, uh, pins and needles and paresthesias and tingling, that sort of thing, that can do it. Uh, sometimes you can get uh, changes in the way the tongue looks, that'll do it. But how would you even know if you had that though? Like if you're trying to confirm, like what test do we do to see if I have a B12 problem? Well, the blood test that you see like on the Quest or LabCorp website that says B12, that's really not a very good test for B12 levels. A better test is something called methylmalonic acid. Uh, and just make sure you're working with a doctor that understands, you know, that testing situation. I don't really have time to go into it today, but it is very important. And then there's actually even a more complicated thing that can happen <laughs> where uh, you're, if they do the B12 test, it can be very high looking because you have intrinsic factor antibodies. 
Uh, if I had time, I'll explain that. And if anybody wants explanation, maybe you can, I'll comment or something about it. But it gets kind of complicated. So again, what is the connection? If you've got gluten sensitivity, it can cross-react with intrinsic factor, which is made by the stomach. And if you start making antibodies against intrinsic factor, well, now you have an autoimmune situation. Now, in the old days, I guess they still use the terminology now, actually, uh, when you had an anemia that didn't get better with iron supplementation, they would call that pernicious anemia. Well, that pernicious anemia is caused by a B12 problem, usually, sometimes folate. And intrinsic factors is a very common cause of pernicious anemia. So can you run a test for intrinsic factor antibodies? Absolutely. All, just about every lab does that. Um, my favorite one to do that with is Cyrex Labs. I have no financial interest in those guys. They don't pay me or anything. Uh, I like them because they do an IgG and an IgA combined uh, antibody test, not just IgG or not just IgA. Uh, can you do a test for gluten sensitivity? Well, you can, but here's what I'll tell you. If you're going to do it, the really the best test to do, again, Cyrex does it, uh, and it's called, I think, Array3x, and it's a very comprehensive test looking at all the different parts of wheat that you could have a problem with. Because if you just go to your primary care doctor and say, I want to see if I have a gluten problem, well, they may run what's called just a gliadin test or a, a gluten test, and that's really just one piece out of about 20 that you could have a problem with. So you can probably understand what could happen here, right? What if you're not having an issue with the thing they test, but you're having a problem with one of the other 19 things? Well, then they're going to mistakenly tell you that you don't have a gluten problem. Or they're going to say, well, we'll do a celiac test. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. Celiac is one kind of problem with wheat, but it's not the only kind, right? So it's like, you know, a poodle is a dog, but not all dogs are poodles, right? You guys understand that. So let me kind of sum up for you again. If you've got a problem with gluten, that can develop into an attack on your stomach lining or intrinsic factor, and then you can become B12 deficient and develop some of those symptoms we mentioned before. So if you've got those symptoms or you're wondering if you've got a problem with those at all, please make sure you're working with a doctor who's very literate and very versed in these things that we just uh, talked about, because it's a lot to know. Uh, and a lot of doctors, meanwhile, they just don't know all this stuff. So make sure you're working with someone that does know, because uh, a gluten problem can be very serious if it develops into an autoimmune problem and none of us want to have uh, you know, demyelination or neuropathy happening because we've got a B12 deficiency. Uh, so again, I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you did. And we've got a lot more to do in this series. But again, make sure you're working with someone that understands this stuff because it's pretty complex.